Sergeants, can we start the uh, backup recordings, please? PC recording, all set. According to the cloud, all set. Backup is rolling. Okay, hello and welcome to today's stated meeting. At this time, I ask that you please turn all electronic devices to vibrate so that we do not disturb the meeting. Madam Majority Leader, we are ready. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of May 27th, 2021. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumble, and I'd like to thank each of you for joining us at this virtual meeting of the New York City Council. If you would like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We will now go right into roll call. Adams. Present. Ampri Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barrett. Less than present. Borelli. Present. Brannon. I'm here. Brooks Powers. Present. Cabrera. Present. Chin. Present. Cornegy. Dharma Diaz. Present. Ruben Diaz. Okay. Dinowitz. Present. Drum. Present. Eugene. Present. Felice. Presente. Gennaro. Here. Gibson. Jonai. Present. Gredenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Present. Lander. Here. Levin. Levine. Present. Lewis. Present. Mizell. Here. Menchaca. Present. Miller. I'm here. Boya. Present. Perkins. Powers. Present. Reynoso. Present. Riley. Good afternoon, present. Rivera. Rodriguez. Rose. Present. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Traeger. Ulrich. Below. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Carnegie. 
Present. Thank you. Ulrich. Present. Patio. Here. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. I'm here. Madam Majority Leader, we have a quorum. Thank you. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Pastor Bear Lee, spiritual leader at First Chinese Baptist Church, located at 21 Pell Street in Manhattan. Welcome. Thank you. Let us pray. Hello, we thank you that you are a good shepherd. As a result, we are not in want. You make us lie down in green pastures. You lead us beside quiet waters. You also call us to be shepherds, both spiritual as well as the leaders of this great city. We are thankful for men and women of this council who shepherd the flocks under their care. We pray for continued provision of water that is clean, food that is healthy, and perhaps energy that will be clean, green. Restore us, our souls, O oh Lord. Guide us in the path of righteousness as we seek to reform systems that are unjust. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, brought to us by COVID, we will fear no evil. Not only are you with us, we are also thankful for the healthcare workers who risk their lives daily to save us and now to help us to be vaccinated. You prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. You anoint our heads with oils. Our cup overflows. As the restaurants of our city prepare tables to be fully open, keep the enemy and then make at bay. Protect your city with your anointing oil of healing. Bring people back to us for the summer celebration. Surely goodness and love will follow us all the days of our lives and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Keep our city as the destination of all who are looking for a house and a home. As we celebrate the contribution of Asian American Pacific Islanders to this city, we remember Dr. Mabel Pingwa Lee. She came to the city from China in 1900 when she was only three. When she was 16, she marched while mounted on a horse at the Fifth Avenue Suffrage Parade in 1914. She became the first Chinese woman to graduate from Columbia with a PhD in 1921. She organized the first Chinese Baptist church in 1936 and served the community and the church until her passing in 1966. With the signing of HR 4463, the Chinatown Post Office was designated as the Mabel Lee Memorial Post Office. We pray that more people from all over the world will follow Mabel's footstep to make New York City their home. As women and men of this council gather, may you renew their strength, their spirit of service, grant them wisdom from above as they take on the challenges facing our people in this great city. We pray all this in your great name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Lee, for that very timely grounding and centering prayer. It is much appreciated and we are so happy to welcome you here to the New York City Council. 
At this time, I would now like to ask Council Member Margaret Chin to spread the invocation onto the record. And thank you so much for being here with us today, as well as for your service to the city of New York and beyond. Thank you. Thank you, Majority Leader. And thank you to Reverend Dr. Bayer Jack Wally for your powerful words. Reverend Lee is the pastor of the First Chinese Baptist Church located at Six Story Street in my district in Chinatown. Before his theological work in Manhattan, he was the pastor of the Chinese Evangelical Mission Church of Queens. He has quite the impressive resume and a long history of serving New York City. He has two master's degree from the Teachers College of Columbia University, and he currently lives in New Hyde Park. Um, thank you so much, uh, Majority Leader, and thank you again to uh, Reverend Bayer Lee for your strong words and for being here today. And I wanna make a motion uh, that the invocation be spread in full upon the record. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Chin. We will now have the adoption of minutes by Council Member Brad Lander. Thank you, Majority Leader. I move that the minutes of the stated meeting of April 29th, 2021 be adopted as printed. Thank you so much, Council Member Lander. Messages and papers from the mayor. M312, Black Car and Livery Task Force appointment. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. M313, ECB appointment withdrawal. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. M314, discount rate. Finance. Preconsidered M315 and 316, budget modifications. Finance. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. None. Thank you. We'll now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to our stated meeting today. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Happy Thursday. This weekend is Memorial Day weekend, a time to remember the veterans who died while defending our nation. We are grateful to those women and men, and we should remember them every day. It is also the unofficial start to summer, and we've earned a great summer. It has been a tough year. On Tuesday, we marked the one-year anniversary of the murder of George Floyd, an innocent Black man who was murdered in police custody. Since his death, the calls for police reform and racial justice have been incessant. And it's a good thing. George Floyd's death marked a critical point in time in our nation's history and sparked a massive nationwide protest movement calling for change. George Floyd's death will not be in vain. The city and nation's work to change how we police must not end. Our city has also seen a spike in hate crimes, including a string of anti-Semitic and anti-Asian attacks across New York City. This is completely unacceptable. Hate crimes are up 70% as of May 16th of this year, compared to the same period last year, according to the NYPD. This is not the direction we want to go in. We must keep working to end hate in our city. Before we delve into our legislative agenda, I would first like to provide an update in our battle against COVID-19 in New York City. As of yesterday, 33,169 New Yorkers died from coronavirus. COVID numbers continue to fall, but the war against COVID-19 is far from over. We need to keep vaccinating more and more New Yorkers uh, are crucial to getting that done. We need to be careful and follow the guidelines to ensure that we finally can get out of this pandemic. As always, we acknowledge those who died while on the job, and I'm sad to say three of those uh, deaths we're gonna to announce today on May 17th, Gerard Fairmean, a livery cab driver died while he lost control of his vehicle on a Brooklyn street. He was 29 years old. On May 19th, the construction worker was killed when an elevator dropped in a building located in the Bronx. He was 30 years old. And on May 22nd, construction worker Diego Yiguicota fell to his death while working on a sixth floor uh, building in Queens. He was 32 years old. As we do at every stated, I want to remember those that we've lost to 9-11 uh, related illnesses. Retired firefighter Thomas Elkers died on May 16th. He was 46 years old. Let us pause for a moment of silence to remember all of those that we've lost.
Thank you. I'd also like to take a moment to thank Monica Peppel for her service to this body. She has been part of the finance division for over two years and covered the budgets of various agencies and several critical council initiatives. We wish her the best of luck on her next professional endeavor. And we're also losing from my district office, Carl Michael Wilson, who has been just an incredible worker, someone who has been such a bright spot in my district, helping so many constituents and community leaders working tirelessly. Uh, he has just been amazing the last three and a half years, and I'm deeply grateful to him. We're gonna miss you, Carl. Now on to the agenda for today. Uh, the Land Use Committee will be voting on the following items. The Governor's Island rezoning as modified in Council Member Margaret Chin's district, 261 Walton Avenue in Council Member Diana Ayala's district, the Arthur Avenue Hotel rezoning in Council Member uh, Oswald Feliz's district, 431 Concord Avenue rezoning, again in Council Member Diana Ayala's district, uh, Sidam Street rezoning in Council Member Antonio Reynoso's district, the Acme Smoked Fish and Gem Street rezoning in Council Member Steve Levin's district, 606 Neptune Avenue rezoning in Council District 48, and 300 Huntington Street in Council Member Brad Landers district. Out of the Finance Committee, we'll be voting on the following items, an expense budget modification and a revenue budget modification that will implement the changes to the fiscal 2021 budget reflected in the executive financial plan. We also have three Article 11 property tax exemptions. Uh, we have, actually, I think it's four. We have Light Hall in Council Member Levine's district, Dora Colazzo in Council Member Carlina Rivera's district, uh, 840-50 St. Mark's Avenue in Council Member Pornigy's district, and 38 Putnam in 3800 Putnam and Council Member Dinowitz's district. Today we're voting on seven home rule messages. Uh, the first is going to reduce speed limits in New York City. At least 243 New Yorkers died as a result of traffic crashes in 2020, the deadliest year on our streets since we launched Vision Zero in 2014. While speed limit reductions and traffic calming measures are proven policies that save lives, state law limits our ability to reduce speed limits. Named for a 12 year old in Brooklyn killed by a reckless driver in 2013, Sammy's Law, it happened in Council Member Landers District, Sammy's Law would give New York City the authority to reduce speed limits to 20 miles per hour. I'm very happy the state is moving on this bill and I am proud to support it. We have a second transportation home rule, home rule item. This one will create a program for limiting overweight trucks on the BQE. We're voting on three other home rule messages to support government workers. One will provide parity among all of the tier two members of the New York City Fire Department Pension Fund and the calculation of their salary bases. Another will allow certain Triborough Bridge and Tunnel members to retire earlier. And the third one will provide benefits to certain New York City transit employees with lung disease. Another home rule message will allow for the Department of Environmental Protection to construct a storm sewer in Idlewild Park in Queens. And finally, we're voting on a home rule that will increase fines for parked or unattended trailers on New York City streets. Moving into our legislative agenda, first we have a resolution out of our Women and Gender Equity Committee. The council will be voting on resolution 920A sponsored by Councilmember Margaret Chin, urging the United States Congress and the New York State Legislature to support a women's right to abortion and to oppose a ban on sex selective abortions, which perpetuate racial stereotypes and undermine access to care. And from the staff, I wanna thank Chloe Rivera and Brenda McKinney. Today, we're voting on a bill to curb pregnancy related deaths. Introduction number 2042A, sponsored by Council Member Vanessa Gibson out of the Committee on Health, will require the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to post information about licensed midwives, including the services they offer and how to find them on its website. More women in the United States die of pregnancy related complications than any other developed country, and the number of maternal deaths have been increasing. Even more disturbing is the disproportionate impact on Black women. In New York City, Black women die at a rate of 8 to 12 times more frequently than white women. Data shows that one possible solution to address maternal morbidity is the use of midwives. However, information about women midwives can be difficult to find, and this legislation will help fix that. From the staff, I want to thank Harbani Ahuja, Sarah Liss, 
and M. Belkin. Next, we have two bills out of the Public Housing Committee to help senior New Yorkers. Introduction number 1827A, sponsored by Councilmember Alika Amprey Samuel, will establish a public housing liaison within the Department for the Aging. The liaison will be responsible for, among other things, coordinating with NYCHA about facilities and other matters impacting older adults in NYCHA, assisting with complaints and grievances regarding senior centers located on NYCHA property, and making recommendations to the commissioner of DIFTA on how to improve programs and facilities for participants of DIFTA contracted senior centers at these locations. Given that DIFTA contracted senior centers have remained closed for indoor programming in response to the COVID-19 COVID pandemic, there is a greater need to ensure that when their doors do reopen, and we hope it's soon, services are provided in a clear, efficient, and effective manner. And I wanna thank from the staff, Audrey Son, she worked on this bill and the next bill that I'm gonna speak of. Also from the Committee on Public Housing, we're voting on introduction number 415A, sponsored by Councilmember Margaret Chin. Again, the New York City Department for the Aging is required by state and federal law to provide various services to seniors, including access to nutrition, benefits counseling, employment opportunities, legal assistance, and in-home services. One way DIFTA provides these services is through DIFTA contracted senior centers. It has been reported, however, that it is unclear who is responsible for receiving and addressing complaints about DIFTA contracted senior centers at these locations, particularly complaints concerning the facilities rather than merely the programming. In 2018, the council enacted Local Law 140, requiring DIFTA to provide annual reports about senior centers receiving DIFTA funding, including but not limited to information on participant attendance, services, budgets, meals, costs, rates of utilization, and other services at senior centers. This bill seeks to increase the amount of information available about DIFTA contracted senior centers located on property owned by NYCHA. And again, thank you to Audrey San for her work on that bill. Up next, we have two bills seeking to reduce eyesores from our streets. Introduction number 1128A, sponsored by Councilmember Bob Holden out of the Housing and Buildings Committee, will require that where construction work has been stopped for at least two years, the green wooden fence on the site be replaced with a chain link fence. And I wanna thank uh, Janine Zilka uh, for her work on that bill. And from the Transportation Committee, we're voting on introduction number 176A, sponsored by Councilmember Alan Maisel. This bill will establish an interagency task force to examine the city's procedures for moving vehicles that are abandoned or parked without a license plate or valid registration from the streets within the city. And from the staff, I wanna thank Jessica Steinberg Albin and Elliot Lynn. Today, we're gonna to be voting on a bill that is one of the biggest and most important things we can do to combat homelessness. Introduction number 146C, sponsored by Councilmember Steve Levin out of the General Welfare Committee, will help move New Yorkers out of the shelter system and into permanent housing. Homeless New Yorkers and advocates have called for the current city's rental assistance voucher program as insufficient. We are taking steps to fix that. We're voting to increase the amount the program pays, which will increase the number of apartments available to individuals and families with vouchers. By increasing the amount the voucher pays, the city would increase the number of units available to individuals and families with vouchers. The bill will remove time limits on the amount of time where an otherwise qualifying recipient of rental assistance vouchers established by the Department of Social Services would receive the voucher. Uh, the, this is an extraordinarily important bill. I wanna congratulate Steve. I wanna thank from the staff, Aminta Kilowan, Crystal Pond, Natalie Amari, and Lewis Children Brown. That concludes our legislative agenda. And with that, I turn it back to you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. We will now move into discussion of general orders. We will recognize council members who wish to speak by using the raise hand function in Zoom. Please wait before you begin your remarks for our Sergeant at Arms to announce he has begun the countdown clock. The Sergeant at Arms will alert you when your time has expired. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any members who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council Member Chin. Council Member Chin, you may begin. Time starts Thank you. now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I wanted to speak on the Governor Island rezoning. And I, first of all, wanted to really thank my colleagues, um, my, my speaker um, for really pushing this forward and supporting it. And 
and my colleague, uh, Council Member Moyer, for holding the subcommittee hearing for so many, many hours. You know, every time my district have a rezoning, uh, it comes to his committee and all the committee member and also uh, the land use uh, chair, Council Member Salamanca. Um, look, Governor's Island is a treasure for the city, not even though it's located in my district. Everyone enjoys it and it's a gem. And one of this rezoning that we were able to do is that we protected uh, the park land ex and expanded open space. And I've heard, you know, from constituents, from stakeholder, uh, the community board, the borough president, um, they want to be able to preserve this beautiful space. But Governor Zion also was also meant to be mixed use so that it can uh, help sustain itself. It takes a lot of resources and money to restore all those historic buildings on the island that provide a lot of great diverse cultural program uh, for the city. But also we have a wonderful harbor school that is, has a real diverse population of high school students coming from all boroughs. And they will have an opportunity to expand the school. And the school, the new expansion will have a gym and guess what? A pool. I mean, the kids need to learn how to swim if they want to go diving, you know, for oysters and, and fixing up our harbor. And on the island, we have composting. What well, we support, and this is, uh, so these are all the things that Earth Matter, they'll be able to stay there and expand um, and all the wonderful th that's there and expanding ferry service. And I really urge my colleague to take the time to visit the island and see how much open and green space there are. And you could just walk around the island and really look at the waterfront, look at the Statue of Liberty and really help us make sure Governor's Island will be sustainable for the future generation. So I really urge my colleagues to support. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Chen. And I look forward to experiencing Governor's Island with you. Are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Council Member Yeager followed by Council Member Felice. Council Member Yeager, you may begin. Time starts now. Appreciate that. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President. I wasn't sure I was going to speak on this topic here today, um, but I'm grateful for the speaker's words of comfort and he sort of put this on the agenda. Uh, earlier today, I thought of former Councilman Lou Fiddler, who would have been 65 today, and I can imagine if I said nothing, he might have himself shown up, so here we are. Last time I rose in this body on this topic, we were gathered in our chamber 16 months ago. And I suppose as we look back to before the pandemic of COVID reared its ugly head, the pandemic of anti-Semitism was very much ravaging our society and our city. And on that day, I asked those of you who market the us versus them messaging about Orthodox Jews to stop to stop painting us as backwards members of society who are in need of your specialized version of cure to heal us from our backwards ways. I ask you to stop your obsession with our yeshivas, stop shining your cameras in our neighborhoods, the ones you bring to display your notion of an awkward backwardness of our people. When I asked you to do this, I asked you not to give us tolerance, an offensive term as if the notion of our existence is one that has to be tolerated, but to give us the acceptance that every single other community in this city and this nation gets to have. I asked you to stop associating with the most heinous of anti-Semites in activist politics, to stop giving them aid and comfort, to stop amplifying their hurtful words, their lies, to stop accepting their endorsements as if their endorsements are our value. And here we are again, those of you who are responsible and to be sure, it's not all of you, but it is some of you and you know who you are and you are oh so comfortable as your predecessors in history have been with associating yourselves with anti-Semitism. And when the verbal pogroms such as were in this chamber, led to the physical pogroms, such as we see on the streets of New York City. Don't raise your hands in shock and tell us that you stand with us. Raise your voices and shun the anti-Semites with whom you stand. This is not difficult. What's difficult is looking you in your eyes as you send your I stand with the Jews tweets. And that's just those of you who have bothered to even do that much. When Pastor Lee quoted from chapter 23 of the book of Psalms, or as we call it by its original name, Tehillim, to be sure, it is apropos to say that to be a Jew in New York today may indeed be walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And yes, the Lord may be with us for sure, 
But that doesn't mean we have to accept walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Yeager. Council Member Felice. Time starts now. Thank you, uh, Madam Majority Leader. Wanted to speak about the Arthur Avenue Hotel proposal. I proudly support the Arthur Avenue Hotel proposal, a proposal that so many people in the 15th Council District are so excited about. The application will allow the construction of a 13-story hotel, as well as a residential development in the Arthur Avenue area in the 15th Council District that I so proudly represent. Arthur Avenue is a vibrant community in the Bronx. It's been like that for a long time. It's home to the best restaurants in the city of New York. It's also the neighbor of the greatest attractions in our nation, including the Bronx Zoo and the Botanical Garden, uh, two institutions that are heavily visited by people from everywhere in the world and also are walking distance from Arthur Avenue. However, there is a need for hotels in the area so that we can create the opportunity of ensuring that people that visit our neighborhood can maybe stay there for another day. Uh, the more people stay, uh, the more business can be done in our community and the more economic activity in the area, the more people in the area are employed and the better local businesses can do. Uh, this is a project that is extreme, highly supported by everyone in our community, supported by local businesses, supported by local residents, many of whom are employed by local businesses. And this is a good project for the uh, Arthur Avenue area in the Bronx uh, in the 15th Council District. It's a project that will help ensure that Arthur Avenue continues to remain the vibrant neighborhood that it is uh, for many years and many decades to come. Uh, for these reasons, I proudly support the proposal. I encourage all my colleagues uh, to support it as well. And I wanted to take a minute to thank the applicants, uh, Harry and his team for being committed to the Bronx and also being a very good friend uh, to the Bronx. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members who wish to speak, Mr. Parliamentarian? No, Madam Majority Leader. <clears throat> Excuse me, thank you so much. We will now move into the report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Finance, preconsidered M's 315 and Reso 1649 and M's 316 and Reso 1650 budget modifications. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 793 and Reso 1651 through preconsidered LU 796 and Reso 1654 tax exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on General Welfare, Intro 146C, Rental Assistance Vouchers. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Health, Intro 2042A, Posting Information About Midwives. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, Intro 1128A, Fences at Construction Sites. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 777 and Reso 1655 and LU 778 and Reso 1656, Arthur Avenue Rezoning. Coupled on general orders. LU 779 and Reso 1657 and LU 780 and Reso 1658, Gem Street Rezoning. Coupled on general orders. LU 781 and Reso 1659, LU 782 and Reso 1660, 261, Walton Avenue Rezoning. Coupled on general orders. LU 783 and Reso 1661 and LU 784 and Reso 1662, Neptune Avenue rezoning and 300 Huntington Street. Coupled on general orders. LU 785 and 786, 30-02 Newtown Avenue. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. Report of the Committee on Public Housing, intros 415A and 1827A, Senior Center Report and Public Housing Liaison. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges and Elections, M310 and Reso 1663, approving the appointment of Matthew, Matthew Schneid, Environmental Control Board. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on State and Federal Legislation, preconsidered SLR1 through SLR7, various home rule messages. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Transportation, intro 176A, Interagency Task Force. Amended and coupled on general orders. On the general orders calendar, LU 753 and Reso 1664 through LU 763 and Reso 1666, Sidem Street rezoning. Coupled to general orders. LU 770 and Reso 1667 and LU 771 and Reso 1668, Governor's Island rezoning. 
coupled on general orders. LU 775 and Reso 1669 and LU 776 and Reso 1670 431 Concord Avenue rezoning. Uh, coupled on general orders and I would now ask the clerk take a roll call vote on all of the items that are coupled on today's general order calendar. Adams. Oh, perfect. I vote aye. MP Samuel. Permission to speak on my bill? Permission granted. Um, thank you so much, Majority Leader, for the opportunity to speak on my bill and to create, which is to create a position within DIFTA to coordinate with NYCHA about matters impacting older adult public housing residents and those that participate in senior centers on NYCHA property. I introduced this bill in 2019 in efforts to increase synergy between NYCHA and DIFTA. One of the reasons that we have senior centers is to bring services directly to aging adults to make it possible for them to age safely in place. Senior centers are a critical part of NYCHA's programming and DIFTA initiatives, but communication can suffer in the midst of personnel changes and budget shifts. The best way to ensure effective communication between the two agencies is to create a specific role. Although I introduced this legislation in 2019, the need became extremely apparent during COVID. Our seniors were and continue to be one of the most affected populations. A dedicated liaison will circumvent miscommunication and lack of communication and lack of information. Thank you, Speaker Johnson, for your support and the co-sponsors and Chair Chen for all of your ongoing dedication to our seniors. And I encourage my colleagues to vote in support of this bill. Thank you so much and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Ayala. I vote aye on all. Barron. Uh, permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. All right, starts now. Thank you. Uh, in, in relation to 2042A, I want to call attention to Mama Nonkululeku Tahimba, who was a community activist and very much involved in the push to have birthing centers uh, expanded in the city. She was renowned and beloved midwife and activist. She was the founder of the Harlem Birth Action Committee. And when blocked from becoming a doctor, went on to become a school nurse as well as a midwife. She held, at, she held annual conferences on birthing rights of parents. And she helped to fight, a, fight for the removal of the statue of Dr. J. Marion Sims, whom we all know had abusive experimentation on reproductive procedures on the enslaved African women that he had. So I just wanna call attention to that at the passing of this bill. And I vote aye on all with the exception of land use 753 and 754, 763, 770 and 771, 774, 777 and 778, and 785 and 786. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Borelli. Thank you. I vote aye on all except intro 14, uh, 146C, uh, pre-considered SLR 3 and 4, and uh, no on Rezo 920A. Thank you very much. Brennan. Uh, I vote aye on all with the exception of land use 0771. Brooks Powers. Councilmember Brooks Powers. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Parliamentarian. Uh, I would like just a matter of order of correction. Uh, Councilmember Vallone had asked to vote earlier on. Um, is it possible to call on Councilmember Vallone at this time so that he can vote? Yes, Mr. Clerk, can you please call on Councilmember Vallone? Yes, I apologize. Councilmember Vallone. No apologies necessary. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. It's a happy day. We're off to my daughter's uh, first graduation in the family. So we're going to the Wagner Musical Theater graduation for my daughter, Katina. I happily vote aye on all. God bless. Happy Memorial Day, everyone. And thank you for the curse. Congratulations. We're so proud and so happy for you. And <laughs> all the best today. Thank you. Thank you. While we're taking a pause, Councilmember Barron. We want to confirm that you also wish to vote no on the accompanying resolutions. Yes, I do. Thank you. 
Cabrera. Avolayano. Chin. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Um, yes, sorry, I didn't, thank you. I didn't get a chance to thank our fantastic land use staff, Raju Mann, Angelina, Martinez Rubio, and Chelsea Kelly. I mean, we work on months, and my uh, land use director, Anthony Drum. I mean, it takes months and months and months of discussion and negotiation with the Governor's Island team, uh, also with the mayor's office. Um, I wanna thank Sean Fitzpatrick. It takes a lot of work to come to this resolution uh, on what's best for Governor's Island going forward. There's still lots of precious open space, park space there. It's a beautiful new park with the three feet, you know, three story slide. I really encourage my colleague to go there and take a look and see how much open space there is. But we need, you know, sustainability for that island. And that's why there have to be some development there. And there will be more towards educational, climate change, and it'll be, it's positive. I know that there's some advocates out there and criticizing, oh, you're, you're destroying open space. That's not open space. Go out there and visit the island. Okay, because the island is open for everyone. And the Harbor School, look at the diverse population of the Harbor School and the future of our kids who will have great jobs and good paying jobs and see how enthusiastic they are in doing composting with Earth Matter on Governor's Island. So come out and visit. And I want to congratulate all my colleagues on their important legislation and especially council member April Samuel for your strong support for our senior, especially senior who go to those centers in public housing that needs a lot more resource. I proud to vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Carnegie. I vote aye on all. Dharma Diaz. I to, um, I and all, I'd like to explain, explain my vote. Yes. Proposed intro 146C. Was that a yes, Madam Chair? Yes. I just want to say thank you to my colleagues, to the speaker and Chair Levin for pushing forward on, on 146C, coming in from the world of social services and displacement, homelessness. I, I know you've opened a stability for many families. Just thank you. So, you know, just thank you because you're making a great dent in removing temporary housing into permanent housing. Again, just thank you all. Thank you. Ruben Diaz. I want to see it todo. Gracias. A usted también. De nada. Dinowitz. I vote aye on all. Drum. Aye. Eugene. Council member Eugene. Oh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Should I put my video on? Yes, please. Okay, I'm trying to do that, but I don't think that the host let me do it. Can I? Okay. Uh, can you? Council member, you can just vote. It's fine. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, before I vote, let me take the opportunity to commend and congratulate and thank also Council Member Levin for this wonderful, wonderful bill that will make a big difference in the life of so many, so many New Yorkers. This is a wonderful bill. Good job. And I want to thank and congratulate all of the staff. If, all of you who have been working on this bill to make it uh, pass today. With that, the bill are, you know, about increasing the value of the vouchers. With that, I want to say I vote I and all. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Elise. I and all, thank you. Gennaro. I'm a majority leader. I ask permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time thank starts you, uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, I wish to support Council Member Chin and all of her work on Governor's Island. She's
quite modest about the great role that she played in getting the Harbor School moved from you know Central Brooklyn uh, um, uh, onto Governor's Island. It was a pet project of mine and and some others, and she played a great role in uh, getting the funding and getting the Harbor School to happen. It's a great resource, and uh, I thank her for her work on that and all of her work on Governor's Island and all my colleagues who are passing important legislation today. With that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Gibson. Permission to explain? Permission granted. Time uh, starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon, Speaker, and all my colleagues. I am proud to speak on my bill, Intro 2042, on today's agenda that will require the Department of Health to post information about licensed midwives, including the services they offer, how to find them, and offer them on its website. It is truly an understatement to say that Black women in our city are in a maternal crisis. It is truly a state of emergency. Black women are eight to 12 times more likely than other women in New York City to die from maternal complications. High rates of black maternal mortality and morbidity is a sad result of years of systemic racism, discrimination, and bias in the healthcare industry that has contributed to the mistreatment and mishandling of black birthing individuals, and it's unacceptable. Black women and all women deserve access to quality patient-centered reproductive health care that is culturally sensitive and attuned to their unique needs. Intro 2042 on today's agenda is a first major step to ensuring that all birthing individuals have access to midwife information and removes all of the barriers that could prevent potential maternal complications. There's a lot of work that needs to be done moving forward, but I'm grateful for today's bill. And I wanna thank Speaker Johnson, Health Committee Chair Mark Levine, Women's Caucus Co members, my co-chair Farrah Lewis. And I also wanna speak in support of Intro 146 and give a huge shout out to Chair Steve Levin and all the housing advocates. We are finally going to raise the value of the city FEPS voucher to provide so many homeless New Yorkers with access to truly affordable housing. When you look at the faces of homeless New Yorkers, they are working class people that have full-time jobs that cannot afford the rents in our city. This is going to be a major step forward, transformative in nature, and I'm really grateful that we're voting on this. So congratulations, Steve, and congratulations all my colleagues who have bills on today's agenda. I vote proudly, I on all, and congratulate all of my colleagues again. Thank you so much. Thank you, council member. Joni. I vote aye on all except for SLR 0003 of 2021. Grodenschik. Uh, thank you. I vote aye on all. I want to uh, extend my um, congratulations to Steve Levin, who um, I mentioned this morning in a uh, committee vote uh, has worked so hard to uh, get the FEBS vouchers where they should be uh, so that people can live in dignity in, in the greatest city in the world. Um, I can't recount how many press conferences we stood sometimes alone, but um, today is a great day and I want to congratulate him and uh, all the people who are passing legislation today. With that, I vote aye and all. Holden. Aye on all. Kalos. Aye on all. Ku. Aye on all. Kozlowitz. May I be excused to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. I would like to uh, attach myself to the remarks that Council Member Yeager had made about anti Semitism. It has to stop. It has to stop. Over a hundred years ago, my grandfather was killed just because he was Jewish. We have to really look at this and to all the members who take uh, endorsements from people that don't like the Jews, shame on you. And with that, I wanna say thank you to Margaret for taking care of our seniors. And with that, I vote aye. Lander. Request permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. I'm sorry. Thank, 
Leader, first I want to give big props to Council Member Levin and also to the homeless individuals and advocates who have been fighting for Intro 146 for years. It will make a profound difference in the lives of many homeless families and indeed in the life of our city as a whole. So thank you uh, for that pushing and that courage and for today's bill. Uh, I'm voting no today on the Governor's Island rezoning, a place that I've visited multiple times every year for the past decade. Uh, I appreciate and respect the work of Councilmember Chin and of those who have worked hard as stewards at the Trust for Governor's Island. And I'm thrilled that the Harbor School will see meaningful new investments. However, as Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer and Community Board One have opined, I believe this rezoning proposal does not justify the height and scale of development that it will permit and that it will have a profound impact on the island, a very special place. In other rezonings, additional density brings affordable housing or transit investments, but that's not the case here. And I don't accept the idea that Governor's Island must generate all the revenue needed to sustain the park. We don't ask that of other parks. It could be a dangerous precedent to set and we should not do it here. So I vote no on land use 770 and 771 and accompanying resolutions 1667 and 1668. I vote enthusiastically yes on intro 146 and I on the rest. Thank you, Council Member Lander. 11. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time thank starts you, now. Directly. Um, uh, so I want to um, thank all my colleagues for their kind words on intro 146. And I just want to thank um, the speaker, um, uh, Chief of Staff Jason Goldman, um, uh, Committee Council Amita Kilowan, um, Crystal Pond, uh, Natalie Omari. Um, uh, I want to thank uh, Doheny Sampora, Frank Sarno, uh, Regina Pareto Ryan, and um, Latani McKinney um, from Council Finance, and, and Louis Jordan Brown, and um, and Andrea Vasquez on their on their work on this bill. Um, uh, I do think that this is going to be an important bill in the lives of many New Yorkers. Um, uh, it is my hope uh, that this will um, uh, give people the opportunity to have uh, a solid roof over their heads for them and their families um, so that they can have the same opportunity that me and my family have um, uh, and be able to get, get on a solid footing and stay in New York City. Um, I wanna thank, uh, there's a lot of uh, advocates that worked on this. Uh, Christine Quinn and Wynn, um, uh, Urban Justice Center, Vocal New York, uh, Coalition for the Homeless and Legal Aid, uh, Neighbors Together, uh, in particular Amy and Annie from Neighbors Together, um, and and all of the um, all of the homeless individuals and families uh, who have advocated for this legislation. It's incredibly um, inspiring to see their advocacy um, and um, and their hard work uh, in holding us accountable. Um, uh, I know that we have still have work to do I look forward to doing that work uh, while I'm here in the council. Um, and, uh, and I just want to thank everybody that, that worked on this. Um, and again, I hope, it's my hope that, um, that this will make a real difference in the lives of many New Yorkers. And with that, I vote aye on all uh, and congratulations to my colleagues on passing legislation today. Thank you. Congratulations, Council Member Levin. This is great. Thank you. Thank you. He's tired. He's about to go for now. Thank you, everybody. Levine. Thank you. Huge congratulations, Steve, on that consequential legislation. And I'll be voting aye on all. Lewis. Sorry. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Good afternoon. Good afternoon and thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I want to congratulate all my colleagues on passing legislation that will strengthen our city's recovery, dismantle disparities, and create more sustainability. I just also wanted to just quickly share that 11 years ago, Haiti was devastated by a 7.0 magnitude earthquake that destroyed and help and, and put Haiti um, in a place where they struggled to rebuild infrastructure and to recover economically, still going to it till this day. And with harsh anti-immigrant policies under the previous White House administration, the fate of 50,000 Haitian nationals, many of them, many of them call New York City home, um, have TPS. And that TPS status remained uncertain. Um, happy to share and happy that we were able to successfully get the Department of Homeland Security to extend 18 month 
um, extension on TPS, which is a major relief for Haitian residents all around New York City um, as we celebrate the Haitian Heritage Month and culture. So happy to see this moving forward and hope we can eventually get to a place where they don't need TPS anymore. Thank you so much. Oh, I vote aye on all and thank you so much, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. Maizel. Yes. Minshaka. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you, Majority Leader. Uh, I want to thank the advocates who have been pushing for a long time to increase uh, what they are effectively doing, increasing the voucher. Uh, the the work that Vocal has done and so many of the advocates at the table, uh, Councilor Levin, thank you so much for for holding uh, holding space for this conversation and really pushing the council to do its best with the administration's negotiations. Uh, I'm going to be voting yes on it, uh, but I know that there were some last minute moments that I think caused a little bit of confusion, but I feel good about this now uh, and am going to be voting yes. There's another, there's another controversial piece uh, that it landed on today's agenda that is the governor's island rezoning. And I think what I want to say about that is Governor's Island is part of the Manhattan uh, district. Uh, Councilmember Chin represents that district, but geographically, it's actually a lot closer to Brooklyn. And that geographic connection is one that has been in pretty big, um, it's, a, it's been a big valley. And something that I've been doing for a long time is trying to figure out how to build a relationship with the governor, the future of Governor's Island. And while I have been wanting a lot more, I think it's only recently with the relationship with uh, the new leader, Claire Newman at the Governor's Island Trust that I've just seen some real changes. Um, I am moved by those changes uh, very quickly. Red Hook and that connection uh, to the island and the future of the island is for me real enough to say yes. Yes for the rezoning uh, but also yes to the promise and the accountability that we're going to be placing onto Governor's Island and in hopes in the future that the geographic connection to Brooklyn uh, brings Governor's I bring, brings Governor Island to uh, CB6 and the District 38. Um, that's, but that's, for, that's our future conversation. So I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Miller. I vote I with the exception of SLR3. Thank you. Moya. I vote I. Perkins. Councilmember Perkins. Council Member Perkins. We'll come back. Okay. Powers. But I at all. Thank you. Reynoso. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. I'm sorry. Thank, you. Thank you, Majority Leader. Uh, just want to say um, it's a great day today to be a council member. Uh, what we're passing today truly um, exemplifies um, what values this council has. And I'm very proud of the work that has been done in uh, assisting in addressing arguably the deepest inequity that exists in our city, which is black women's health during childbirth. Um, empowering midwives and doing this work truly is gonna make a difference. It's simply a step in the right direction. We have a lot more to do to make sure that we can close the gap on those inequities. But I'm very proud of the work that's being done here by the city council um, and increasing our vouchers and making sure that people have an opportunity uh, to live uh, in stable homes and we make it a reality and actual po actually possible is a value as well. So I just wanna congratulate all the members that have done this work today. I think as a council, as a body, we should all be very proud of the legislation that's being passed here today. And I proudly vote aye on all. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you. Riley. Proudly voting aye on all. Congratulations to all my colleagues. Rivera. I vote aye. Rodriguez.
Rose. I vote aye on all, and I, I want to congratulate Steve. Um, I do believe by changing the amount of the vouchers um, that you are going to have a big impact on homelessness in New York City. So congratulations. And to my colleague, Ma Margaret Chin, who's worked a long, long time on Governor's Island. Thank you for getting all of the benefits that you did for the Harbor School. And I vote aye on all. Rosenthal. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I'm start now. Well, I want to echo the words of Councilmember Rose and Reynoso, who just spoke. Um, you know, it is uh, always great to be part of a body that uh, is listening to uh, the voices of those who um, need help. And, and, and certainly Council Member Levin, um, Council Member Gibson, Council Member Chin with her resolution coming up have done that um, and all the others, uh, including all the others. But I do just wanna say on Governor's Island, um, you know, my office uh, did also receive a, quite a bit of email um, about it. But what's so admirable about Margaret Chin is she listened, she, she has the capacity to sort of cut out the noise and listen to the people who will be directly affected by this rezoning. She satisfied the needs of the Harbor School. She satisfied the needs of the um, Governor's Island Alliance. You know, I, and yes, there is gonna be some development on the island. I don't think, uh, and, and I support my colleague, Council Member Chin 100% and I'm voting yes on that resolution. But I just wanna make clear how, how cynical it would be of me representing Central Park and Riverside Park, parks who can fundraise on their own um, to pass judgment on Governor's Island, which has tried for so long to raise money and just can't. And so what Margaret did was listen. I'm inspired. And to uh, make sure this rezoning went through. Um, and I, just want to reiterate how much I admire her for doing that. And uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Salavanka. I on all. Traeger. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Uh, I'd also like uh, permission to vote on previous uh, land use call ups. Uh, Majority Leader. Permission granted. Uh, thank you. I, I want to congratulate uh, my colleague, Councilmember Steve Levin, uh, for uh, never giving up. It's, it's one thing to issue a press release. It's one thing to put out a tweet, but it is something else to actually get something very big done. So I want to congratulate him and all the staff, uh, his staff, the committee staff. But I also want to thank Speaker Corey Johnson and his senior staff, Jason Goldman and others, because this is the work also of, of independent speaker. I think, uh, I think back to a lot of the landmark legislation and accomplishments uh, of, of this council. That's because we have an independent speaker because the barrier to this has not been the council. It has been the administration and others. So I wanna thank you, Corey. I wanna thank the, the staff. And, and with that, I vote I on Thank you. Thank you. Aldrich. Uh, good afternoon. I'm voting I on all with the exception of SLR3 and SLR4, but I on all others. Thank you. Van Bramer. I on all. Jaeger. Thank you. Um, Madam President, may I be excused to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Sarge. Uh, 
first, I'll, I'll just state my votes and uh, we'll be voting aye on all with the exception of uh, M315 and accompanying resolution 1649, uh, SLR3, SLR4. I will be abstaining on SLR5, LU770 and accompanying resolution 1667. LU-771 and accompanying resolution 1668. Uh, and also, uh, I would like to just call my colleagues attention to uh, an item we're not voting on today, but which uh, uh, we have accepted and referred over to the Finance Committee, um, M314, it's a communication from the Banking Commission. As uh, my colleagues will recall, last year we had a debate on the floor of this council uh, with respect to the usurious interest rates that the city charges those who are unable to afford to pay their real property taxes on time. And at that time, many of uh, my colleagues were dismayed by the notion that we would have a conversation on the Florida Council. Why wouldn't we have this conversation in the Finance Committee? Well, I couldn't agree with that more. So I'm flagging for my friends here in the City Council that the communication for the Banking Commission recommends that the Council adopt, which we usually do with a rubber stamp, uh, interest rates of three and a quarter percent, four and a half percent, 12 percent uh, and 18 uh, percent to punish those who are not able to pay their property taxes on time. As this moves through the council and we'll be voting on it uh, next month, I would like to draw the attention of my colleagues to this uh, because it is coming up at us. And uh, I hope that those of us in the council who don't want to abuse uh, New Yorkers and continue to abuse New Yorkers will join those of us who last year opposed these usurious interest rates and uh, let's get together and do it uh, now that we have this in front of the Finance Committee. And with that, thank you very much, Madam President. I appreciate it. Thank you. Perkins. Hello? Yes, yes, hi. You're on, on Councilmember Perkins. Okay. What's How do the, you vote? What's the, what's the, hello? Is anybody there? I guess yes, we're right. here. Is the, the roll call on general orders. What is your vote, Councilmember Perkins? Please. Um, I vote aye. Th th thank, thank you. Thank you. Matteo. I'm voting no on SLR3, no on SLR4, and no on 146C, I and the rest. Thank you. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. Aye. Thank you. Today's general order vote, 48 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, no abstentions with the exceptions. The intro 146C, which is 46 in the affirmative, two in the negative, no abstentions. LU 77A in accompanying resolution, which is 45 in the affirmative, three negatives. LU 771 in accompanying resolution which was 44 in affirmative, four negative, SLR three, which was, excuse me, 42 in affirmative, six negatives, SLR four, which was 44 in affirmative, four negative, SLR five, 47 in affirmative, zero negative, one abstention. 
LUs numbers 753, 754, 763, 777, 778, in all accompanying resolutions, 47 in affirmative, one negative, no abstentions. And, and that is it, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Madam President? Yes, I, I, Thank you, Madam President. Um, uh, if I may just through the president uh, address the clerk, I believe I abstain. Yes, you did. On, three, uh, M, M315? No, 315 and 1649, I was a no, but on LU770, 771 and the two accompanying resos, I'm an abstention. Okay. Sorry about that. So thank you, council member, for clarifying that. M315, 47 affirmative, one negative. No abstentions, LU-771, revised vote. 44 in affirmative, three negative, one abstention. LU-770. Again, uh, forty-five in affirmative, three negative, one abstention. Thank you. I'm sorry, LU-770, excuse me, 45 and affirmative, two negative, one abstention. I apologize. Would you like to read the, the tally in totality again, all together? Okay. General order, 48 in the affirmative, zero negative, no abstentions. 146C. Um, excuse me, 45 in affirmative, three negative, zero abstentions. 753, 754, 763, 777, 778, and all accompanying resolutions. 47 in affirmative, one negative, no abstentions. SLR5, 47 in affirmative, no negative, one abstention. SLR four, forty four in affirmative, four in the negative. SLR three, forty six in the affirmative, six in the negative. M thirteen, M three fifteen, forty seven in affirmative, one negative, no abstentions. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Can you please? Clarify the vote on SLR three. Forty two in affirmative, six in the negative, and no abstentions. Okay, are those correct? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, uh, Councilman Yeager, did that address your uh, discrepancy? I, I, I think so, uh, Mr. Speaker, but um, when, the, uh, when the chart comes out later, I guess we can all look at it. It's on the tape, however we all voted. So if there's a problem, we can always go back and, and revise it later. But I think that the, that, that the uh, numbers were stated. How do you have LU 770 and 167, uh, uh, the two, 770, 771, and 1667, 1668. All right, for 770, okay, for 770, yeah. I believe you, I believe you, did you abstain on that? I'm abstention. It should be, I okay. think, 4521, those two. Yes. I, okay. 4521. All right, thank you. So, so for, for those two, it's 45 in the affirmative, two in the negative, and one abstention. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you so much. We'll now move into the discussion of resolutions. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Uh, Madam Majority Leader, I think we have the introduction and reading of bills. I'm so sorry. Thank you. We'll now have today's, uh, the items on today's general orders calendar are adopted. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you. 
We'll now move into the discussion of resolutions. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Are there any members at this time who wish to speak? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council Member Chen. Council Member Chen, you may begin. Yes, I want to. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I just wanted to uh, speak briefly on Resolution 920. And I wanted to really thank the Committee on Women and Gender Equity, our chair, uh, Council Member Dama Diaz, for uh, doing the vote um, this morning and for her support and the committee support. And also Council Member Rosendahl, who was the former chair of the committee, uh, for conducting the hearing with the Health Committee Chair, I think Council Member Levine, uh, last year. Right now, you know, Roe v. Wade and women's right to chew is under attack. And it's just so important for us to really send a strong message to Washington and to the state legislation to stop this. And also the, you know, sex selection abortion. I mean, they're using that to really discriminate and targeting, especially, you know, Asian Pacific Islander women and perpetuate that kind of stereotype. So I think we really need to send a strong message. And I also wanted to thank um, my sisters in the Women's Caucus for your strong support and to the co-chairs and also to the staff who work on um, this resolution, of course, to our uh, speaker for your strong support on this. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? No, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. We'll now have a voice vote on today's resolution. If you wish to vote against or abstain from today's resolution, please notify the Legislative Documents Unit by email. I'll now read today's resolution into the record. Resolution 920A urges the United States Congress and the New York State Legislature to pass a woman's right to abortion and to oppose a ban on sex selective abortions, which perpetuate racial stereotypes and undermine access to care. Will all those in favor please say aye. 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 <laughs> all those opposed say nay. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. We will now move into general discussion. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Are there any members who wish to speak up in general discussion at this time, Mr. Parliamentarian? Yes, Council Members Barron, Menchaca, and Ku. Council Member Barron, you may begin. Time starts now. You're Council Member Barron. Okay, sorry. Reclaiming my time. <laughs> we recently commemorated the death of George Floyd, a black man killed without cause by an officer of the law. And that horrendous criminal act is sadly a part of the history of this country that manifests a litany of crimes embedded and protected in the systems that perpetuate innumerable political, economic, and social injustices against Black people. I want to call attention to the race massacre which occurred 100 years ago on May 31st, 1921 against the Black community of Greenwood in Tulsa, Oklahoma, perpetuated by, perpetrated by law officers and those that they deputize. Greenwood was founded in 1906 by O.W. Gurley who purchased property in so-called Indian territory. There were many African-Americans who had traveled with the Native Americans during that trail of tears to that territory. The community of Greenwood became an epicenter for black families and entrepreneurs and professionals and laborers as well. The businesses included hotels, banks, hospitals, churches, newspapers, school system, transportation systems, restaurants, jewelry stores, theaters, and clothing stores. It is said the dollar exchanged 19 times in Greenwood before it left the community. This uh, thriving, self-sufficient, self-reliant 
so-called Black Wall Street community drew the envy, the jealousy, the animosity and ire of the white community that literally was on the other side of the railroad tracks. Following the resurgence of the KKK, the continuing rise of Jim Crow, and the horrible incidents of the Red Summer of 1919 and the spread of lynching, law enforcement attacked Tulsa, burned it to the ground, dropped firebombs from airplanes and leveled that community known as Black Wall Street. Time expired. Thank you. It is said that the damages included 30, what would be $35 million in today's property value. 6,000 people were interned in Tulsa, 10,000 were homeless and, thir and 300 were killed. So I wanna call attention to the 100th anniversary of the Tulsa race massacre, May 31st, 1921, and say that they have still not received adequate compensation and reparation. Thank you. Thank you. We will now have council member Menchaca. Time starts now. Thank you, majority leader. I want to make brief remarks about two resolutions I'm introducing today, one with public advocate Jamani Williams and the other with Councilmember Alika Ampri Samuel. The New York For All Act. When President Trump was elected in 2016, I drew strength from the fact that we had already built a sanctuary system that disentangled local law enforcement from immigration enforcement. His presidency was a stress test for that system. And for the most part, it protected immigrant New Yorkers from his worst policies. But our sanctuary system only applies to New York City. There are thousands of New Yorkers in the rest of the state who continue to be subject to the worst excess of our deportation machine. This is why public advocate Jamani Williams and I are introducing a resolution calling on the state to pass the New York For All Act. The bill would take the New York City's sanctuary system and apply it statewide while strengthening it in the process. There's not much time left in the state legislative session, which is why I'm grateful that the speaker is moving our resolution forward today and helping us secure something, hopefully in the next few weeks while we go up and fight in Albany. Next, the second resolution I'm introducing today is with Councilmember Alika Ampri Samuel, which also involves some of our most vulnerable neighbors. As we all know, for years now, NYCHA has been plagued by gas stoppages, electrical outages, and leaden drinking water. Too often those of us who are fortunate, uh, are too often those of us fortunate enough to represent NYCHA residents make a big deal about some of the failures. Then we celebrate a very long delayed uh, return of the service. But what is happening here is that NYCHA residents are still paying full 100% rent. What we're asking in this bill in the state is for people in our communities, NYCHA residents, to get compensation, to get abatement. This is why I'm proud to represent this uh, uh, and introduce this resolution with Ampri Samuel to call on the state to pass the Utility Accountability Act. Um, we'll be in touch with you throughout the next few weeks so we can bring those voices to the state legislative body and pass this in this session in the next few weeks. Thank you so much, Speaker Johnson and everyone who's worked on this. Thank you. Council Member Ku. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader. Today, I'm asking my colleagues to join me in signing on to a resolution by myself and Council Member Chin and Traeger, calling upon the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation that will require public schools to teach Asian American history and civic impact. This resolution supports state legislation that has recently introduced by Senator John Liu and Assembly Member Wang Kim. And it follows a year that has seen a 150% increase in Asian hate crimes across the United States, according to recent studies. It also follows a recent survey that found 40% of Americans were unable to identify, to identify even one prominent Asian American. In that survey, the most, common, common, the most common answer was, I don't know. The second most common answer was Jackie Chan, who is not even American. Clearly, we have a lot of work to do. 
the best way to combat hatred and ignorance is through education. And the best place to get an education is in our classrooms. This is where our young people form their ideas and social skills. It is where they establish identities, which in turn helps to teach children to appreciate one another and to reduce implicit bias. In so many ways, American history is well history. Most New Yorkers know this, but too many do not. With the rise in anti-Asian hate crimes, it must be our responsibility to ensure future generations have every opportunity to learn about the history, the contributions, and the civic impact of all of us, not just some of us. So I hope you will join us in supporting this resolution that will require Asian American history and civic impact in our public schools. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you, Council Member Ku. Mr. Parliamentarian, if there are no other members that wish to speak, I will close. There are. Um, Council Member Chin would also like to speak, and then you may close. Council Member Chin. Yeah, um, thank you. Thank you, Madam Pajari Leader. I just wanted to uh, bring my colleagues attention to bill that I'm introducing um, in relation to senior center reopening. And I've heard all my colleagues asking me, when are we going to open our senior center? And a lot of the, our constituency, our seniors have been asking this. And the administration still have not put a plan together. They said that they started grab and go and it hasn't happened. Um, and so we demand that they should definitely have a plan in place. Restaurants are open, venues are open, Broadway is gonna be open. When are we gonna open our senior center? So I urge my colleague to sign on um, to this introduction so that we can get our center open as quickly as possible. Uh, the other thing is my resolution um, calling on the New York State Assembly to pass and the governor to sign S14 and A613, the Jose Webster's Untraceable Firearm Act. I think people have heard about ghost guns and those things are not regulated um, in our state. And with so much gun violence happening in our city, we need to stop that. And I, so I urge my colleague to also sign on to support this resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you, Council Member Chin. And I just wanted to close addressing so much of the hate that we are seeing all across this city. Um, when Reverend Dr. Martin Henry's, Luther King- I'm sorry. It's okay. When Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King you, Jr. I'm, I'm sorry, um, Majority Leader. I, yes. I, I had my hand raised so with you, of course, you know. Okay, then you go and then I'll go. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. So this afternoon we, we, we are introducing legis and first and, and let me just say happy Memorial Day to all and thank you for those who have protected us uh, during time of war and time of peace and let's, let us also remember those uh, who we've lost during the time of COVID who we have not had the opportunity to memorialize. Uh, let's keep them in mind. Today we'll be introducing two pieces of legislation. The first introduction, 2325, at the request of the mayor, would amend the administrative code of New York City in relationship to protection of restaurant, food, for, food service, and airport workers displaced due to COVID-19. This legislation would require covered employees to be rehired, laid, uh, laid off employees due to government order, lack of business reduction, and, and the work in force and or other economic reasons before hiring new employees. It will give certain workers who have been laid off through, through no fault of their own, the opportunity to get back to, to their uh, positions. This is ensuring that New Yorkers are affordable, afforded most at their most experienced workforce. I ask you to please support uh, in, uh, intro 2325. And then next, uh, I, along with some of my colleagues will, uh, who have signed on, I want to thank you, uh, will be introducing intro 2326 related to ranked choice voting. Out of deep concern for the June 22nd primary uh, and how it may play out, the software to count ranked choice voting ballots was only approved on May 25th, with the state noting ongoing security concerns and that RCV proponents admitting that the lack 
of cash votes, record records being released in timely fashion could frustrate public trust and accountability. Both Dominion and the city's in-house election vendor declined to bid the city's RFP, citing serious concerns about timeless and significant risks to ensuring successful elections. Based solely on what we have seen thus far, it is apparent that New York City deserves the opportunity to make an informed decision about ranked choice voting. This proposed legislation would allow a much wider swath of voters to determine whether or not ranked choice voting is the right for New York City and will be able to use the June 22nd primary as the benchmark for making their decision. I want to thank uh, the majority leader and the colleagues that have signed on to this legislation. Should we find that the New York City is not ready for ranked choice voting uh, by virtue of June 22nd primary, this introduction, this legislation will, will be prepared and will allow us uh, New Yorkers to have to give informed choice uh, uh, and decisions come November uh, general election. I want to thank you, Madam Majority Leader, for your time. Thank you so much, Councilmember Miller, and thank you so much for your leadership. Madam Majority Leader, we now recognize Councilmember Yeager. Councilmember Yeager, you may begin. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I, and I recognize I'm, I'm signing on late, uh, signing up late. I just want to add uh, to my good colleague, uh, Councilman Miller's remarks, um, you know, because uh, Twitter and, and the uh, intelligentsia of reporters are already exploding about this bill because unlike uh, those of us here who read the bills, uh, they don't bother. So to be very clear, this would do nothing to this primary. Uh, this would do nothing to the special elections that have already happened. And, um, you know, I think folks who know me by now know I don't co-sponsor something that I didn't read. And all this would do, all this would do is put it in front of the voters for them to make a choice, an intelligent choice, not in a low turnout election and a flag which I raised in 2018 on the Government Affairs Committee, um, a Government Operations Committee when uh, the public advocate and the Manhattan Borough President were testifying. And I specifically asked, why would we want to put this on the ballot in 2019 when nobody is going to vote? And the statistic is that 73% of those who bothered to show up to vote, voted in favor. Well, first of all, not my district. We opposed it and it was beaten in my district. But secondly, the totality of the number of people who voted in favor of this represents a pittance of registered enrolled voters in New York City. Let's put this on the ballot in a mayoral election year. I would have preferred doing it in a presidential election year. Let the greater part of New York City participate. But with the full uh, set of information and facts after all the ballots are counted this year in the primary, let's ask the electorate in November to decide whether this is what they want their future to be. And that's why I'm proud to join uh, Councilman Miller, the Majority Leader, uh, Councilmember Adams, and I hope many, many of my colleagues here in the council who love democracy the way we do. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you so much, Councilmember Yeager. We now recognize Councilmember Carnegie. Councilmember Carnegie. Time starts now. So I apologize deeply for the late sign up, uh, but Majority Leader, I don't know if you're aware of the tragic loss we've just suffered in the Crown Heights community. Uh, very recently, we lost uh, a stalwart um, for our community and for especially for our seniors. Uh, the president of the precinct council, president of former president of the Block Association, his titles go on and on. He was a friend, a mentor, somebody who I, I just don't know how I'm gonna get through this. And, and, and these deaths seem to be coming uh, so quickly, but um, rest in peace to Mr. James Caldwell, I just wanted to take an opportunity during the stated uh, and during this time uh, to mention to people that there are people in our community that are not elected officials, but do a yeoman's job in making sure that the elected officials are aware and held accountable. And Mr. Caldwell was one of those people. So thank you, uh, Madam Majority Leader for this time. Thank you. May Mr. Caldwell rest in peace. We now recognize the Majority Leader. Thank you. As I had started out saying, um, when we think about the hate crimes that are happening across this city, we think about Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who stated that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, and truer words could not have been spoken. Hate works in much of the same way as injustice. 
There is no doubt that hate crimes have been on the rise across this country during and since the presidency of Donald Trump against Black, Latinos, Asians, Muslims, Jews, women, and the LGBTQ community. We saw during the Capitol riots a conversion of hatred onto our nation with nooses being hung, Camp Auschwitz paraphernalia, and a consistent message of the Chinese virus, which made our Asian community that much more vulnerable. Living in a city as diverse as New York City requires everyone to speak out against hatred in any form when it is against your community, but especially when it is against a community that you don't necessarily identify with or shame, share the same values or beliefs with. Elected officials can continue to issue quotes or statements condemning hate and violence, but until we realize that hate and violence are like a virus that does not remain isolated against any one group of people, we will never make progress. At baseline, we all have to agree that in order to live in a diverse community, we have to have a shared responsibility to collectively work to condemn hate, even when our silence benefits us in the short term. So I will close with that, and I will turn it over to Speaker Corey Johnson to close today's meeting of May 27th, 2021. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. The stated meeting of May 27th, 2021 stands in recess. Thank you. Thank you.